Hello, everybody. So now that we learned a little bit about Brito, we're going to talk about the plan for our projects. It's going to be a two part plan. Right, right here is a sample of a finished project. Um, I use mostly markers and planned out my color schemes. Um, the gray on my mice is colored pencil. And of course, for my bold outlines, I used um, Sharpie markers. So let's talk about the criteria first. And this is when we get on the good paper. Um, project Brito picture is worth 100 points. First off, interesting main object drawn simply. So mine is a cat. You could have an animal, you could have a person, you could have a person with action, uh, like some of Brito's characters. Um, it could be a really cool object, you know, teapot, something that's, you know, very interesting. Uh, lines creating shapes in the background, and that is what's um, going on here with the lines that are in the the background and some actually go through my shapes. Some stop in the middle of the page, which is okay, which is like Rito style. Um, 20 points, and this is important because this is what makes the picture really cool. Has at least 20 shapes. So let's count my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. You get the idea? I've got way more than 20. So it's pretty easy to break it into the uh, 20 shapes. The important thing is that your object fills enough space. And I've included some fun accent objects, which we'll talk about during the plan. To go with, this is actually Sid. That's been a stylized drawing of Sid. And he has a toy mouse that looks like this. OK. Um, boldly outlined in black. Some of mine I outlined in black before I colored. And some I did again over so it would pop more. Now, this is important, the bold outlines. If you don't have a Sharpie, do them last. Otherwise, your medium might end up causing them to bleed and ruin your colors, which I, I will talk about when we get to the actual project directions. Uh, 15 points, create at least five color patterns that are repeated. So I've got my orange with my polka dots. I've got a uh, light green with dark green hearts. I've got yellow with orange stripes. I have gray with black stripes. I have hot pink with blue violet pattern. And then I've got a grayish blue with blue stripes. So that is one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six patterns. 15 point, picture pops. You want to use bright, vibrant colors. Think about Brito, no dull colors. You don't want to have, you know, things aren't, they're going to be exciting and pretty and happy. Colored neatly and solid for the media use. Now that means that your areas are solid, but that you also have patterns. Um, you can use markers. You could use color pencils. You could even use crayons. And I would definitely suggest that you use the Sharpie or black marker for your outline. Sharpie works best. So you will get a little leeway in the media that you use. I would definitely, markers work really well. Color pencils will be a little harder with the, the patterns. All right, and of course, craftsmanship. Overall appearance, did you do your best putting forth 100? percent for the time allotted. That means working every day. All right, let's talk about plan one. 
which is first off, you want to brainstorm ideas and come up with what you want to draw before you plan. And this is my, oops, where's my cursor? Um, this was my brainstorm. It was my little quick drawing of Sid deciding what pose he was going to be in and what was going to go with him. So this is just me coming up with some ideas. Maybe, you know, jot some down, do a little practice drawing. They don't have to be necessarily big like mine. In fact, this one is, I think, a little smaller than my, my planning paper. All right, you need one main object that's simplified. You notice I don't have a lot of small details. Think about Brito's style and how he um, draws things with not a lot of shapes. They're almost cartoonish, but they're more creative. Right, need one main object, simplified, draw them without a lot of details. You want to fill at least one third of the paper. And that's how big Sid is here on my paper. You don't want it too small and you don't want it to be so big that you don't have background because the background is where all those cool patterns are going to be, right? Much of Brito's patterns are in the background of his work. And that's what really makes it pop. Um, your image may be an animal. It can be human. It can be alien. It can be a vehicle or another interesting object. You want it to look interesting and cool and you need it to pop, okay? So this here is what I want to see when you submit plan one. Okay, so this will be a stopping point. You know, submit your plan. Make sure it is, as always, a good photo so I can see the entire paper and your image. All right, plan two. So now you're going to add background accents. For this, you could use hearts, you can use stars. You know, Brito loves hearts and stars, and it's in a lot of his work. Or a small item that goes with your main object, like my toy mice that go with my cat. And as always, do not copy Miss Sackett's artwork. That is actually a picture of Sid that I have stylized, and a picture of Sid's mice. If you want to do something else, there's a million different ways to draw a cat and mice. For example, you could have a dog and bones. You can have someone with sitting in a beach chair with an umbrella in the background. You can have, you know, like decorative candy. And so on and so forth. You could have like if you draw a cow, you could have spaceships in the background, little spaceships. That would be funny. So there's a lot of different things you can do that you should not be copying Miss Sackett's idea. I love cats. Love my city. That's why I do a lot of cats and fish and sharks or things that I like, right? Um, then you want to draw lines. Oops, let me see. They draw background accents and not too many. You know, I've got three. That's plenty. Um, draw lines in the background that cut the plane into shapes. The lines may be straight or curved or a mix of both. So here's one that's straight. This one's curved. I actually took his ear points and took them off the page. This one's got a curve to it that actually kind of goes through to the other side, but doesn't cut the cat in half. Um, then I have one that's curving through my cat's body and one that's going straight. So it's broken it into area. And having lines for this one that go partially away to leave an open line like this one here, you see that a lot in Rito's work, that's okay. Also, you see I got the little accent tails of my cat. It's gonna be a bold outline, so for that line, it's okay. You want to plan where your lines are going to go before drawing them. That will break the background into cubist-like shapes, like my sample here. Now, see what I watched out for here on my plan? You see how tiny that shape is? I adjusted that on my good paper, and I don't have that tiny shape. That's why you want to kind of plan where you're placing things so you don't end up with shapes that are too small to color in with uh, bright colors and patterns. Think about the placement and size of shapes they will create. You don't want them, the shapes, to be too small to color neatly. Because that what makes his, um, this project cool and Brito's work cool is all the beautiful patterns. You want okay, this is a typo. <laughs> you want your lines to cross over in areas, creating new and interesting shapes. 
Also, you may have a few lines go through your main object to make more shapes, to make the coloring more eye-catching. So see what I had is I broke it. They went through the cat, so now I have the shape, the shape, the shape, the shape, and this shape where I can have cool patterns on my cat. Plan carefully so you're not cutting through areas you want to stand out or that will make too tiny of shapes, like the ear here, I just did that. You want your main object to stand out. You don't want to lose it with all, you know, being a little too busy in the background. Um, you need at least 20 individual shapes in the picture. More is great. Mine has over 40 and is not complicated because you have to have so many patterns and if you don't have enough shapes for them, that's not good, okay? Oops, there we go. So it's got a nice composition. Remember, this is my plan. You can see I've got erased some lines and readjusted stuff um, because I'm gonna change some stuff. It looks like I had a shape here at one point and changed my mind because it was cutting the mouse funny, okay? And then once you do finish this step, you want to submit your drawing for my feedback. Remember, as always, it's important to look at my feedback before you move on. You needed to get your first drawing okay before you moved on to the background accents and cutting it into the lines and shapes. Remember, again, a good, clear photograph that shows the entire paper and your artwork. You want me to be able to see it. Okay, and then of course, after planning, we'll be able to move on to our good paper. 